Reloading. It's such a simple core component of the game, but it's only until you take it away do you realize how borderline unbearable it makes the entire experience. See, this isn't a challenge of skill. I don't do that here. This is a challenge of endurance. Once you remove the ability to reload, it limits almost every single positive aspect of every single gun. I mean, it doesn't really matter how powerful a gun may be if you can only shoot it three times before you gotta toss it. So trying to progress under that one condition is soul crushingly tedious. But of course I decided to go the extra mile and make things a little bit more interesting for myself. So these are the rules I had to follow. First and most obvious, no reloading. Once a gun's clip runs out, I needed to drop it. And obviously, I wasn't allowed to pick it back up. Second, once I shot a single bullet, the gun had to stay equipped. This is because placing it back in the inventory would reload it. Three, I wasn't allowed to abuse save reloading with the primary intent to reload my guns, but I was able to use it when farming for gear. Four, I was only able to use legendaries and uniques once. This was just to prevent me from using the same OP item over and over again. Five, I was only able to deal damage to enemies using my guns. I mean, it wouldn't have made much sense if I just picked someone like Krieg and did something like a melee build, so I wasn't able to use melee, grenades, or even vehicles. Six, I wasn't allowed to use the infinity for obvious reasons. Seven, and just because I like to punish myself, every time I killed a main boss, the first time, I had to drop all my gear. Now, defining which bosses are a main boss isn't that easy, but the bosses I went with are Knuckle Dragger, Captain Flint, Warden, Wilhelm, Bloodwing, Jack's Body Double, Angel, Saturn, Handsome Jack, and the Warrior. And of course, the challenge ends once I beat the Warrior. Now before I even begun, I was tasked with debatably the hardest decision in the entire run. Who would I pick? Now there are a few good choices, but I ultimately landed on Zero for three reasons. He's a character with an action skill that doesn't break the rules, his crit class mods and skills would come in handy, and lastly, he had one skill that I knew would come in clutch later on. But it was only after I selected my character did it become very apparent, very quickly, that I was already out of the frying pan and into the fire. See, I was given three starting guns, plus a default pistol if you can even consider it a gun, but that was it. That was all I had until I made it to the southern shelf. Which meant I had to take my time, line up the headshots, and not f*** this up. So even though I was faced with the impossible, I managed to clear out the path straight to Knuckle Dragger. The best part? I did it with just one of my guns, so I had a little bit of a confidence boost, which only resulted in me missing half my other shots. But I did ultimately take him down with just two more of my guns. But you see, since Rule 7 is in effect, I had to drop all my gear. Now this was a slight problem, because I still had to take out the minions, with no gear. But don't worry, this was one of those rare times when I thought ahead. See, I was convinced that if I was to relog and return, all the enemies would be gone. But as it turned out, the boss respawned, which I didn't think was supposed to happen. Now, it was at this point that I almost packed this run in. See, this is one of the only places that doesn't have a weapons vendor, and I'm pretty sure that none of the breakable piles in this area drop any guns. So that meant I only had one other option. It was time for the DLCs. Now one of the big downsides for me is that all the DLCs start at level 15 or level 30 to 35. So all the gear I'll find would be way out of my level range. Now to my knowledge, there is only one vendor in all the DLCs that'll sell guns around my level. It was the one from the Fight for Sanctuary DLC. It was selling guns ranging from level five to seven. So okay, all I had to do was get level five, come back and buy some guns. How hard can that be? Well, usually it's pretty easy as I could just stay here and let Mordecai snipe the enemies for me. But I didn't want to risk the mission ending and losing the vendor. It's highly unlikely, but given that it was me, I'd say it's a 50-50. So the first stop was the peak and you want to know how to get a free level? Just open the door. Moving on. Next was the Tina DLC. Now, even though this place was level 30 and everything could turn my ass inside out, there are a few missions that I could complete regardless of my level. See, all I had to do was take this idiot here and make him follow me all the way over to the golem. This is because I can't kill him, but he could. However, life is never that simple. As it turned out, he just kept losing his aggro pretty much at the finish line. Now, this wouldn't be a problem if I had a gun, but since I didn't, that left me of two options. Die of old age trying to get the golem to attack him from a distance, or move on to the next area. 
So the next stop was the Hammerlock DLC. Now this place was perfect to gain a few levels. See, all I had to do was meet with Hammerlock and have him take out the locals for me. I mean, yeah, half the time he'll be shooting out random objects or the wooden posts, but when he doesn't miss, he don't miss. I'm talking quantum levels of accuracy. So after a while of drawing the enemies into his line of fire, my XP slowly built up. In fact, I almost had my level 5. But I guess Hamlock didn't hit his 50 wooden post quarter in the last 10 seconds, so he left me hanging and I went down. But thankfully, I had it once I got back up. So, at this point, I was now level 5 and returned to the Fight for Sanctuary DLC, A Changed Man. I bought every single piece of trash gun I could get my greasy hands on. But before I returned to Claptrap, I had some unfinished business to take care of. Yes, and boom! Come on, one more. One more golem. There we go. But after all that, I was a higher level, I was geared, and ready to take on Knuckle Dragger once again. You want to know what happened? He was gone. So that didn't make any f***ing sense. Now taking on the next area gave great insight to how this entire thing was going to play out. See, I cleared out three groups of bandits, and it was only until I was done did I realize I had nothing left. That's all it took. But whatever, no big deal, I pushed on with literally nothing to the next boss. Now, since hopes and dreams aren't enough to win this fight, I had to act fast. So I stuck my hand in and fished what little I could out of the toilet. And as luck would have it, I found two shotguns. Now, it was enough to take at least one of them out, but here's the thing about shotguns. They're a one and done. Big load, small clip. Now, since I burned every single gun I had, and running around endlessly isn't as effective as you might think, I had only one option left. I had to leave the area, walk all the way back up the hill, just to buy more guns at the vendor. Now, I knew at the time that if I didn't start finding more gear, this was going to become a regular occurrence. But on the bright side, I now had enough to knock this idiot off his high chair and take him out. Now, I knew if I wanted to fight the next boss, with gear this time, I would have to save as many guns as I could. So that meant I had to avoid all the enemies while collecting as much as I could along the way. And all that effort amounted to five guns. Impressive, I know. So that meant if I was to mess up by, oh, I don't know, dying a single time, it would have costed me everything. You want to know what happened? I fucking died. So just to get this straight, in my one attempt, I lost 90% of my guns and there was only one place I knew where I could get more. I think you know what I'm talking about. So after I was done walking back and forth between Flint and a vending machine, I got myself a car, collected the power cell, and made my way into Sanctuary. Now since I was here, I got my first choice of an SEU upgrade, but in reality, there was only one choice. I mean, what was I going to do with ammo upgrades? Throw them at people? I had more bullets than brain cells with no guns to use them on, so I went with the backpack upgrade. After that though, I headed straight for Frostburn Canyon, but I think this is a better time than ever to go over something really important. When I was progressing through each area, I had to make a choice out of two things. Either I took out all the enemies for XP at the cost of my guns, or I avoid all the enemies to preserve my guns at the cost of XP. So basically, I had to choose between getting run over or set on fire. So in this particular situation, I went with the fire. Now I mainly wanted to keep my guns for the waves of enemies coming up. However, as it turned out, 
Lilith did a lot more than I originally thought. She actually provided good support while I slowly cleared out the enemies. Hell, she even got the last kill once I ran out of guns. Now, this was surprising to me, because I guess I was used to BL3 Lilith, so I wasn't actually used to her doing something. After that though, I made it to the Bloodshot Hideout Gate. However, they told me to go f myself, which meant I had to start collecting car parts. So finally, I got a simple, straightforward mission. But you see, Rule 5 took offense to that. So this meant I had to do it all by hand. I'll show you what that looks like. Trust me when I say this, it's not as fun as it looks. Now, surprising to literally no one, this one mission burnt my entire inventory to the ground. So of course I had to go get a bunch more guns. Allow me to show you that process. What I did was collect items from the chests in the Tina DLC, sell them, and use that money to buy more guns. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wow, Zentane, that's a really efficient method, but why didn't you just farm a red chest? It's probably faster, better, and not cost a cent. Well, that's a very good question. Now look, I knew that sooner or later, the level gap would come back to haunt me, and I knew it was going to be rough, but I wasn't expecting it to be 4 extra levels above me rough. That made even the smallest of bitch slaps lethal, which meant I only had one option. Now it took a while, and might have costed every single gun I had, but I took Bad Maud down by hitting nothing but headshots from the coward position. Now I didn't even attempt the next area, because I decided to take the hint and level up. Now the assassins proved to be a good source of XP, plus it was one of those rare instances where I kept finding guns throughout the area. So I was sure I was going to make it through in one go. That was until I got to the last one. See I only have one gun with one bullet left. So I lined up the shot and didn't manage to kill him. So of course that sent the hamster wheel inside my brain into overdrive. I had to think fast. Now he lived with little to no health, so if I was able to deal a little bit more damage, it would definitely kill him. So, I came up with an idea. There was one barrel left in the area, and I was going to use it against him. However, since I didn't have any way of setting it off, I needed him to do it. But as it turned out, it wasn't enough to take him down, and I got shot off the edge. Now the good news is, I managed to get my level 11 in my first attempt at the Bloodshot Hideout. But the bad news was, I ran out of guns before I got to the end. Which meant I had to leave and regear myself using sensible and financially stable methods. Then on my second attempt, I had enough to just make it to the dam. But even after running past everything and heading straight to the warden, I knew that I didn't have quite enough to take it down. So I went straight to the chest right next to it. Now call it a coincidence, luck, or divine intervention, but I found a hornet inside the chest. Now this gun is great, high corrosive damage with a decent sized clip, but the only downside was, it was level 12. Now since I was pretty close to leveling up, I just said screw it. I went back to mutilating random people and shooting at deranged lunatics, but it was only until I took out Doc Mercy did I get my level 12. However, around this time, my brain kind of shut off and I accidentally picked up this mission. Now if you didn't know what it is, it's essentially a mission where it gives you an E-Tech weapon to kill a certain number of bandits. But of course, the clip runs out way before that can happen. Now this wouldn't be a big deal if I could abandon the mission, or better yet, drop the gun. So yeah, this thing was kind of like a tumor for my inventory. I didn't want it, I couldn't get rid of it, and it's taking up space. But whatever, I had my level 12 and returned to the dam to take on the Warden. This time I used a rocket launcher to break its shield and melted its health using the Hornet. Now since I had to drop all my gear, I was going to use the strategy of letting Roland take out all the enemies for me. However, it was taking way too long and I just decided to save an exit. It comes in handy if you don't want to fight the enemies after the boss. Now at this point I was pretty much skirting the edge between still being able to slowly kill things while barely progressing. This is mainly because I still didn't have an effective way of leveling up, and all the usual things I do were rendered completely useless. See around this time I would probably do the bad more farm, which usually consists of me throwing a fastball at him to get a quick kill and easy XP. However, I now had to slowly burn through my entire inventory just from mere crumbs. Now lucky for me I was still in range to be somewhat effective all the way up into Wilhelm. Now the great thing about this fight is that I could farm the chest for weapons. This came in handy since you need a lot of corrosive to take him down efficiently. But as time kept on progressing, it became more and more apparent that my strategy of the bare minimum was running out. But the final nail in the coffin was when I visited the fridge. 
See, the rats were only level 14. So my level. But just on the other side, the fucking wildlife was level 17. So at this point, I was just getting abused. Which meant I had no other choice. I needed to level up. A lot. Now, there are a few ways I could have achieved this. The first and most straightforward would be to do side missions. However, since Sanctuary was a little, uh, out of reach, I didn't have access to a lot of the good stuff. But even if I did, I needed something a little bit better. Now, working under the soul draining conditions that I was really narrowed it down. I needed something that was fast, gave good XP, and rewarded you with a ton of weapons. That last part being the most important because I needed something to offset the diminishing returns from all the guns I usually lose. But then again, once I put it like that, the answer became very simple. The Snowman DLC. Now this place ticks all the boxes. Just beat the boss and get a ton of XP and guns. Plus, as luck would have it, it was a DLC around my level. Now that was good and all, but I still had to complete the mission in order to get to the boss. And that was a little harder than you might think, since I went into this place with practically nothing. But if blissful ignorance has taught me anything, which it usually doesn't, is that it can take you very far. For example, I pretty much avoided everything on my way to the train, then burnt what little guns I had taking out all the bandits. And I almost had a moment of self-reflection, but thankfully, that didn't need to happen because I managed to enrage the Goliath with my last two shots. So from this point on, I just needed to guide this Neanderthal to all the other enemies. And I thought for sure this guy was gonna bite it very early on, but no, he somehow managed to hang on. And it didn't take long before he got big. Like, scary big. So after I broke the ice and released the train, I just let him do all the heavy lifting. Which I gotta say, he was taking out entire groups of enemies with a single hit. It was pretty much unstoppable, and I'm not gonna lie, I was kinda shitting myself, because if he survived everything, I was gonna be next. But sadly, the impossible happened and he finally took the fall to the very last enemy, but he didn't leave us empty handed. With this, it was just enough to take out the last enemy and complete the mission. Now, everyone's guardian angel is different, and mine just so happens to be an overweight, mentally deranged, brain dead, roided up caveman. Okay, so it was time for the Wildlife Preserve. Now, since I spent a couple of hours leveling up, I thought that I, for the first time this entire run, would be overleveled. However, as it turned out, I was pretty much on par with everything else. In fact, I was pretty much in the exact same position as I always was. So that was just fantastic. Though at the very least, I did have a lot better gear, which helped with things such as this. Oh, and also that. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was kinda dreading the fight with Bloodwing for a couple of reasons. The first would be that I had to try and hit headshots on a giant flying pissed off chicken, all the while trying to preserve my shots. Which by the way, those two things are usually mutually exclusive. 
Not to mention, that you only get a chance at a second win later on in the fight. But the icing on top of the sh** cake was that I had to practically do it all with zero health. Now, it did seem that I was being a little bit dramatic, because once I combined my class mod and skill tree with something like a high damage Jacob Sniper, it was almost enough to blow its fucking head off. And it was only until Bloodwing was on her last stage did I start feeling the heat. She left very little openings and would continually melt my health. Trying to get a good shot while not wasting ammo was also a massive crutch, as I was slowly starting to burn through a lot of my good guns. But thankfully, I managed to line up a last good shot while she was getting ready to dive bomb me. However, the victory was a little bittersweet. Since I had to drop all my gear I worked so hard to get, including my precious crit class mod. So once again, I was back to square one. Now I needed a way to recuperate my losses, so like every gambling addict, I returned, lost pretty much everything, won a tiny amount of it back, and saw it as a great success. So yeah, that really made going through the slab hideout a little bit more difficult. I pretty much had to rely on the Goliaths to do a lot of the work, which is something you can't really rely on, because half the time they'll die before picking up any momentum, and the other half will just be them avoiding everything else and exclusively beating the ever-living dog sh out of each other. But for what it's worth, they did it really well. Next, I needed to deal with Jack's body double. And even though he was a much higher level than me, he was also Jack's body double. So he just fucking dies. Now, like always, I needed to toss all my gear. However, this time, I didn't really care that much. I don't think I had much attachment to my two guns and collection of white shields. Now, it was at this point where I really started to hit the wall again. All the enemies were a lot stronger, and when you couple that with the level difference, it becomes a problem. However, of course, I just ignored it and pushed on to the next mission. Needless to say, I got ego checked in the first 5 seconds, and no amount of hopes, dreams, brute force or elbow grease was going to get me past this situation, at least in my current state. So of course, I just had to bite the bullet. It was time to do side missions for pitiful amounts of XP, starting with this standoff between these two degenerates. I didn't get much, but I did get a free Varuk, which was a nice touch. After that, I accused some random guy in the street without any evidence and started taking out the working class. But the worst part was traveling to this giant underground toilet, only to almost die 50 times just so I could retrieve Marcus's spank bank. But after re-gearing myself and gaining another level, it was enough to get past the first constructor. But it was also very apparent that I was still underleveled, the biggest sign that I was now getting ego checked by the turrets. Not gonna lie. That was a new low for me. But it was only until I reached the badass constructor that I really start feeling it. This thing was strong. Like, three levels above me and very tanky strong. Now one way I got a little bit more damage off was to bore the constructor. It's a little dangerous because you usually got to get up really close and hit it at the right angle. Also, since it requires the turrets, once they're destroyed, you won't be able to do it again. Now I died three times and on my last attempt, I got it down really low. But before I could finish it off, it got bored and decided the fight was already over. So that meant I had to go back to farming, collect a new inventory, and make my way back to the constructor. This time I came close to dying multiple times, but finally managed to take it down while getting the second win. So now, I could finally make my way straight to the bunker. And once I dealt with all the turrets, I finally made it to the moment I was waiting for. Now that is one of the most beautiful sounds you will ever hear. Now for the two people who don't know, Bore is a skill that can pierce through enemies, and every time it does, it will massively increase in damage depending on how many enemies it hits. However, there's a few enemies in the game, including the bunker, that are built with multiple hitboxes. So, when I shoot at the right spot, Bore will pierce through all those hitboxes at once, causing massive overlaying damage, and in most cases, one-shotting it. Now this one skill was pretty much the main reason why I picked Zero. I knew the farming in this run was going to be rough, especially in the later half, so I needed an XP farm that, once again, ticked all the boxes. However, like always, there is just one little problem. Because of course there is. I wasn't able to farm the bunker until I completed the mission, and the angel fight is probably the hardest thing in the entire run if I was to attempt it under leveled. This is mainly because I'll run out of guns way before I'll ever be able to finish it. So just to get this straight, I had to gain around 3 levels from side missions and get significantly better gear just to complete one mission that will cause me to lose all that gear but make it so I can farm the bunker and eliminate the need to do side missions. Yeah, that sounds about right.
So with that mission out of the way, I was finally able to farm the bunker. Now since it was level 26, it was more than enough to take me to level 30. Now yeah, it's kinda like staring at a brick wall for a couple of hours, but compared to all the side missions I did, that was like eating the brick wall. Now at this point, more than ever, I needed to be smart and not waste my guns, because the walk back to the bunker wasn't exactly fun, exciting, or fast. So with that in mind, I bought myself another backpack upgrade and made my way to the Sawtooth Cauldron. Now since I was a high level, I didn't really need to bother with the small fry, if anything it would have been a waste of guns, so I headed straight for the elevator. But that's when I encountered these guys. Now they were pinballing my ass back and forth, and it was only until I burnt one third of my inventory was I able to remove them from this plan of existence. Once they were dealt with though, things were looking up. I pretty much blew Mortar's head off with little to no ease, and as for the buzzards, it wasn't so bad if you're able to get a good shot, which can be a little bit difficult sometimes when they're doing stuff like that. But after all that, this is where the real fun begins. See, I was up to Saturn, and even though I landed a very good first hit, it then proceeded to consume every single gun I had. See, at the time, I didn't have a lot of corrosive on me, and without it, it's kind of like trying to melt steel for match. So just before I was able to take it down, I completely ran out. So of course, I started to panic. I couldn't waste this opportunity to take it down on my first attempt, so I quickly ran over to the chest on top of the building, and as luck would have it, there was a corrosive gun in it. So, okay, saved. I unloaded both guns, which left it with what appears to be a tic tac of health left. So I panicked once again and quickly ran to the nearest chest that I can think of, which at the time was the one in Bonehead's area. Now I almost died trying to get in, but at least I found a rocket launcher. So after I almost died trying to get back out, it appears Saturn respawned. So it was back to the bunker once again. This was the point where I kind of wanted to put my head through a wall, but before I did that, I loaded my inventory with nothing but corrosive guns and rocket launchers. Needless to say, it was a slight overkill, but now I had to complete the mission without any gear. Now getting to the terminal was the easy part, dying and having to get back to said terminal, now that was the hard part. See everything was waiting for those 2 seconds that I would appear, so they could manhandle me. Plus when you coupled that with the fact that I was too stubborn to go off and find myself another shield, eh, let's just say I was at it for a while. But here we are, the final stretch. Now getting past the gate wasn't as hard as you might think, the turrets were doing half the work while I was snapping from a distance. But when it came to the next area, I kept getting my ass catapulted, either from the floor or getting shot off a cliff. But once I made it to the end, I got the opportunity to farm the chest near the exit. Now since it's a higher level than the stuff I get from the bunker, I found a better class mod, a few rocket launchers and a few decent snipers. So I knew this was going to be more than enough for Jack. Speaking of which, it was time for Handsome Jack. Now I'd be lying if I said that this fight even tested a single brain cell, because once again, like the body double, he just fucking dies. So the only hard thing about this fight is the fact that I had to toss everything and go re-gear myself. Now I originally planned to get myself the B shield, and maybe pairing it with something like the Lady Fist, but I was convinced that I could take on the warrior with nothing more than a good class mod, a few rocket launchers, and a decent sniper. However, on my way back to the chest, I learned that the elevator was only a one way. So I had to walk all the way back, and this time, without barely any gear. But once I found the chest again, I got what I needed and returned to the warrior one final time. Now the plan was very straightforward. Three rockets that break the seal, and then hit nothing but crits. Now I had to do this multiple times, and nearing the end, I was getting pretty close to running out of rockets and launches. But thankfully, I didn't f*** it up, and managed to hit the last shots just before I ran out. But there you go, you can beat the game without reloading. But honestly, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're a borderline masochist.